Uh, my name is uh, Magnus Lindgren and I come from the company Pop-Up Store mm -hmm. and what we do is uh, we provide uh, fan merchandise stores to gaming companies and the publishers. Okay, that's, that's really interesting. How did, you, how did you get into this? Why did you decide that mobile games perhaps needed to move into something like merchandising? Um, we have a background in, in promotional items. We've been doing promotional items for big corporations. Uh, stuff like t-shirts, lanyards, notebooks, pens, the likes for, for uh, corporate marketing purposes uh, since of 1992. So we have a long track record there and uh, we're Finland based. Uh, we've got several offices in Asia and also in, in the US. But with the Finnish gaming industry booming, uh, there was obviously, uh, uh, we, we had connections also in, in the gaming industry. And through those discussions did we find uh, the opportunity of also providing uh, the, the uh, merchandise side to the gaming industry. Okay, so how exactly does Pop-Up Store work? How exactly do developers get their merchandising listed? You know, whereabouts, whereabouts for example, can a user buy from Pop-Up Store? Uh, the way we work is that if you should be looking at one of the, the games that we uh, have provided a solution to, for example, Badland, that we, we like to use as a well-known uh, showcase, is that uh, in the landing page of the game, starting page of the game, you would find a small icon with a t-shirt. And once you click on that, you would go into a, a browser-based store, which uh, continues the same experience of the game. So it looks like a game, feels like a game, you more or less stay within the game, even if it's a browser-based store provided by us. And you find a range of items there that we've selected with, with the client, and you purchase them by, by credit card, and we deliver globally. Okay, so why? Why exactly do developers take this route? I mean, what is it about merchandising and, say, the extension of a brand? What kind of value does that deliver to a developer? I mean, obviously, they're hoping to make some money, but is right. there more to it than that? Uh, yeah, actually, there is, because initially, we were thinking also about the, the commercial side. But as it turns out, it's very much also about giving something back to the, the uh, gaming audience and, and uh, the keeping up the dialogue, extending the, the life cycle of the game. So, so that's one of the, the uh, core assets there, not only the financial side, but actually uh, building the, the bridge with the, with the gamers. And also, uh, obviously gaming companies, they like to bring their games to life with physical items uh, through basic t-shirts, phone covers, or, or say, plush toys or figurines. Yeah, it's a very interesting sector. And I'm, I'm wondering, do you think that this is going to get bigger and bigger? Do you think that this is going to become one of the large parts of the industry, these attempts to extend the brand further with licensing? I've spoken to some Finnish companies, some of the newer wave of companies who said they're really committed to building these brands. Do you think this is going to become a global phenomenon? Um, obviously, yes, because we, we are investing heavily into this <laughs> yeah. and uh, we, we, we sure like to think that this trend will, will continue. But the main challenge for us, however, is keeping I mean, keeping things simple and being realistic is that uh, it's it's not that interesting for all of the games because for very uh, casual games people still like to play the games wherever they go but they might not uh, like to show the affinity to the brand yeah. through t-shirts mugs whatever so so we we obviously like to find those games that really like to either do it for internal marketing purposes or then uh, get get the items out to the big audience yeah well that's really interesting one last one last little question. I guess it's just about the Finnish scene as a whole. I mean, yeah. obviously you've, you've tapped into this Finnish mobile scene. I mean, do you have any ideas behind their, their success story? I mean, is there anything about the Rovio success perhaps with their licensing that's really inspiring other companies? Do you think that's something that's really big and important within the industry? Um, I think in general, Finns are not, I mean, are really good in say technology and R&D. But we haven't been as, as successful in marketing our solution as, for example, a typical comparisons with the Swedes, who are who are overly self-confident in, in all situations. But we need to have more obvious for, for our fins to get for our fins to get our our uh, concepts out there. So yeah. I think it's definitely helping us. No, well, best of luck anyway with it. Thank Sounds you. like you're going to try your best to try and create a few more of those rovios in the industry as a whole. But okay. thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you.